Within days, all the Palestinian groups stopped their attacks, and Israel's army began to relax its grip on the occupied territories. Life for Palestinians there began to improve. President Bush's embrace of Abu Mazen was beginning to bear fruit. Are you going to have Abu Mazen to the White House now that Ariel Sharon has been invited? <laughs> it meant yes. Abu Mazen decided to focus the meeting on one thing. Israel was building a 500-mile barrier. They said this would stop suicide attacks. The Palestinians said that it went beyond the internationally recognized border to secure Israeli settlements on occupied land, and that it cut off Palestinians from their livelihood. We had all the arguments prepared orally, on maps. Abu Mazen presented the map, and President Bush said he liked maps. I mean, uh, maps uh, sort of enliven things and made them clearer. His case was simply that it would be difficult for him to do what he needed to do within the roadmap context if his people could see this kind of thing taking place. That's uh, an argument that's easy to understand. The president understood it. I think the wall uh, is a problem. It is very difficult to develop confidence between the Palestinians and the Israel, Israel with a wall snaking through uh, the West Bank. For the first time, an American president was taking the Palestinian side. But would it last? Welcome. You're looking good. I'm glad to be here. Four days later, when Ariel Sharon arrived at the White House, some tact was required. I said to him, you know, if one way to protect yourself was with a fence, and that's fine. But when that fence makes deep inroads into Palestinian territory, then you're changing the circumstances on the ground unilaterally, and that's going to give us a problem. <laughs> ויטמן שאמר שגדר את גדר טובה יוצרת יחסי שכנות טובים. Nevertheless, I strongly argued in order to empower Abu Mazen to do what needed to be done against resistance that it was necessary for the Israelis to do things, prisoner releases, or removing blockades and barriers, allowing economic activity to take place. הבהרתי מההתחלה שבנושא של ביטחון אזרחי ישראל ומדינת ישראל אני לא עושה ויתורים עכשיו, אני לא עושה ויתורים בעתיד. התחלנו לפעול לבניית הגדר בצורה המהירה ביותר. Back in the West Bank, Hamas were watching. The Hamas activist volunteered to coordinate a suicide attack. A fellow member was chosen to be the bomber. The Hamas cell chose to attack not far from the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. 
the suicide bomber dressed up as an Orthodox Jew. With his minder, he entered Jerusalem at a point where the security barrier was not yet built. Twenty-three Israelis were killed, including seven children. Abu Mazen went straight to Arafat to ask him to hand over control of the security forces so he could go after the perpetrators of the attack before Israel struck back. <laughs> موحداً بإمرة وزير الداخلية أو بإمرتي فهذا لن يحل المشكلة فقال لي لا أقبل ولن أقبل أنا رئيس السلطة وأنا مسؤول قلت له بدأ أنت مسؤول يبدو أنه لا أمل أنه نقدر نحقق شيء لأنه أنا بإيش بدي كيف بدي أمسك النظام والأمن في البلد شيران was not prepared to wait he called together his security cabinet they decided it was time to kill the founder of Hamas, Sheikh Yassin, who had always been off limits because he was a spiritual leader. Israeli intelligence received a tip-off. בשלב הזה היה ברור לנו שהנהגה מתכנסת במבנה בין שלוש קומות בעזה. על פי המידע שהיה ברשותנו, הם התכנסו בקומה השלישית. והייתה התלבטות קשה מאוד. איזה משקל של חומר נפץ מטילים מהאוויר על הבית הזה. היה ברור שאם אנחנו נטיל פצצה בסדר גודל של טון אחד, ייפגעו הבתים הסמוכים ויהרגו אזרחים, ואז ברור שכל המחבלים ייהרגו. The Israeli Air Force were instructed to drop a quarter ton bomb. The target, the third floor, was completely destroyed, but it was empty. The Hamas leaders were untouched. בדיעבד זה די ברור ששייח יאסין על כיסא גלגלים יותר סביר שיהיה בקומה ראשונה מאשר בקומה שלישית, אבל זו לא התמונה שהייתה לנו בזמן אמת, והחלטות אתה בסוף עושה על סמך המודיעין שיש בידיך. זה מה שקרה. 